Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to use the new Yule V8 model. It was just released a couple of days ago. And then we're going to actually like apply a tracker on top of the Yule V8 model. So we're just going to use a pre-trained model. We're going to implement the sort algorithm together with Yule V8. You can also use deep sort and all those different kind of like algorithms. I'm going to show you how we can modify the code from Autolytics and also from Yule V8. Then we can basically just go in, take all the information. We can apply additional steps. We actually like just extract information, put it through a tracker, and then we can track our optics over time. So this is actually like really nice. It can be used for a lot of different kind of things in your own applications and projects. All my code will be available on my GitHub. So this is really exciting. We're actually like able to run these YOLO V8 models with tracking in real time. I'm running like around 100, 100 plus frames per second while we're actually like tracking around optics in the frame. Then we're going to do live inference on a webcam with the sort algorithm tracker. So first of all here, we just jumped inside the YOLO V8 uh, GitHub repository. So we basically have this repository from uh, Ultralytics. Here we can see some results for the new YOLO V8 model. We can see a comparison with the other uh, versions of YOLO. We can see that this acts like has really good performance, the same parameters, and it can act like run in real time. We can run update detection, instant segmentation, and all those different kind of things in real time. We can see some documentation of how to install it. I also have a video about that, that on here on the channel where I show how to install it. We go over the GitHub repository and how to set up these different kind of like parameters. And then I'll show you how to do live inference. So we're basically going to use that in this video. We're also going to use the predicted class from the YOLO V8 model. And I'll show you how we can modify the predicted class from YOLO V8. We can basically go in, extract information from our detections, feed them through a tracker, then we can track the optics over time. We can do additional post-processing steps. Uh, we can extract information. We can go in, store information, visualize the information if we want to do some visualization in another way and all those different kind of things. So I'm definitely really excited for it. We're going to see some really nice results at the end of this video. So we're not in this Visual Studio code. I've basically just cloned the GitHub repository from Autolytics that I just showed you. Then we have all these different kind of folds, folders where we have the YOLO's architecture, we have the different kind of models, we have the, the scripts for doing detection, predictions, uh, validation, and also training. So in this video, we're going to use this predict file. I basically just modified it where we have this detection, detection predictor class which is inheriting from this base predictor. And this is what is actually like handling all the predictions from our model. It will basically just take the images, feed them through the model, and then we get the outputs out. We can do some get annotator. So we can get the annotator. We can do some pre-processing steps. So this is basically just normalizing our values. We can do some post-processing where we do non-maximal suppression on our predictions. So this is basically just a detector predictor class that you can set up. And, and this is actually just a default one uh, from YOLO V8. You can go in and modify it for your own applications and projects. So this is basically what I'm doing in this uh, video here where we go in and do the tracking. So we basically just add additional steps. So from our predictions, we go in and add a tracker on top of our predictions. We also have some write results here. So if we want to write the results out to a file or if you just want to display them on our image so we can have this live inference running where we can see all the, all the predictions in real time as well. We can go in and set that up. So this is basically just the default code. Then we have this predict function that we basically call when we want to run our application. We want to predict with our configuration. So we set the model equal to a model that we load in. So a custom model. I'm also going to create some videos where we're going to custom train our YOLO V8 models, both for optic detection and instant segmentation. Uh, and then we can basically just export those models from Google Colab after we've trained them. And then we can import it into here, into our CFDG.model. And then we can do predictions in real time with our own custom um, optic detector. Here we basically just set up all these different kind of like input arguments. So all the input arguments should be inside of this config. And then we can basically just pass in all the input arguments into our predict function when we call it. Or we can just call it with command line um, arguments as well. So this is basically the, the file here. I just copy pasted the file and then we went in and created this track.py. And then we have our tracker. I just initialized this tracker. So I have this sort.py. So this sort.py is actually like the exact same code as I've used in one of the other videos where we did optic detection and optic tracking with the YOLO v5 model. So this is basically just a sort algorithm which uses a Kalman filter um, to track the optics over time. So we both have a predict state and we also have an update state. And then based on new predictions, we can actually like update, um, update our estimate and our track of our optics. And then we can basically just track our optics over a number of frames. And then we can actually like even though we lose track of our or like lose detection of our objects, we can still um, we can still track it because we have like we have knowledge about the past. 
So let's say that we have an object here that is moving, then we're just tracking that over time and then we lose information or like we lose detection of it. Then we should actually like still be able to track it over time because we know how it has been like, how it has been moving before that. And then we basically just have our tracker with some good parameters, which we're updating based on our measurements and our measurements are based on our detections. And then we basically just have this update and prediction step. And then we can basically just have this Kalman filter tracking our objects around in the image frame and we can store information, use that for like tracking cars, tracking different kinds of like objects. And also just for when we're doing object detection, just add a tracker on top of it, just to make sure that if we're losing detection, we don't really like lose detection of our, of our act like detection in our image. Um, so if we lose detection for one or two frames, because again, if we're running like hundred frames per second, if we just miss like one detection, we will actually like lose track of our, uh, lose track of our object. If we're not using an optic tracker on top of our optic detection uh, model that we are running. So I won't, I won't really go into details with this code. You can check the other video out where I go over, um, how it's implemented this sorting algorithm. You can also apply the deep sort algorithm. I also have another video where we use the deep sort algorithm. You can just copy paste the deep sort algorithm and the code for that directly into it um, as I've done here with the sort algorithm and then inside the track file we basically just initialize a tracker and do the exact same thing as we did in the previous videos. So if you want to know like how we can set up these trackers and how we can use them on top of our optic detector definitely make sure to check those videos out. Um, here we're just going to use it. So I just copy pasted this sort algorithm into our pi file and then we just go up here. So from sort we just import everything that we have inside of that file. Uh, and then we import all the other things here. So all the other things here are basically just copy pasted from uh, from the predict file uh, provided by YOLO V8. First of all, we need to initialize our tracker. We just set our tracker equal to, or we just set it as a global variable. We set the max age here equal to five. So if we lose detection for five frames, then we like like discard our detection. But if we lose, let's say we lose detection for three frames when we're actually like doing and running our live inference on a webcam, then it will still keep track of the object in our image frame and we won't lose track of it. We can also set minimum hits here. So before we actually initialize our track of an object, we need to detect it two times. You can play around with these thresholds here. Uh, we also have an intersection over union threshold. So these are the three thresholds you will actually like need to tune for your specific application and project uh, to set up this tracker. And then we basically just initialize our salt tracker with the max age, the minimum hits, and also the intersection over union threshold. And then we basically just have our tracker here. We can then pass in the detections from our YOLO V8 model through the tracker. We will keep track of the object. We can store the information and then visualize the tracks over time. Here, we're just going to create a function for like creating random color list. So we can just have random colors for our tracks and also detections in our image frame. We have these store boxes. So basically we just extract the, the information of our bounding boxes. And then we use OpenCV to draw like rectangles. Um, around the objects or so the bounding boxes and then we also have this put text we're going to draw a circle at the location of our act like tracks so after we have tracked our objects we will basically just store uh, all the information and then we'll draw uh, dots of all the previous positions our object has been in and that will basically just be the center of our bounding boxes so we here we just take box of zero box of two uh, divided by two so we just get a center of it so we take the x value and the y value so this will be the center of our bounding boxes and this is basically what we're going to draw so we can track and we can see how we have tracked the objects over time in our image frame. Then we return the image and then the rest here for our, de our detection predictor is basically like the class from the predict file. But we can also go down here and actually like set up our tracker function. So detections to sort, first of all, we just initialize them as empty. So if we don't have any uh, tracks at all or like any detection at all we're just going to throw in an empty array because we actually need to pass something into the tracker but if they're just empty they will not do anything uh, then we basically just go through all the detections so we have the detections here they are on the gpu if you're using the gpu so first of all we convert it to the cpu we get the x value y value x2 value and the y2 so that will be the top left corner and the bottom right corner of our bounding box we get the confidence score and also uh, the label of our detected class then we basically just set it up in the correct format for our uh, uh, sorting algorithm. So this is the detections that we want to throw inside our um, sorting algorithm. Then we can call this update state. So again, we have an update state and then we have a predict state where our predict state is basically just predicting where are we um, in the frame with our object. And then we have our update state where we get the new detections in and then we update our previous predictions and our, our new state based on the det new detections. Then we have the tracks. 
we will just want to get the track we call our tracker dot get tracks so then we basically just get the results from our tracked object from this get trackers we have the trackers we can just have a for loop running through all the tracks we have an image and then we basically just display our tracked image so again we have the boundary boxes and then we'll have our our track positions we're going to display that on our image so we can see how um, our optics in the image frame is actually like, tracked over time down here at the bottom we can just specify like if the length of the track detections is greater than zero then we're just going to draw uh, the bounding boxes so we're not just drawing drawing bounding boxes we only draw the bounding boxes if we're actually like, tracking objects around in the image based on the parameters that we set to our tracker at the start then we basically just return the lock string here and now the rest of the code is basically just the exact same thing as in the predict.py file so again you can use any other algorithm you'll just need to set it up in the same way as i have here or if you want to store information write it out to a file uh, displayed on the image in some other way you can just go in and do that uh, i basically showed here what code you actually need to modify to be able to do that so let's now run the file here and see how it actually like works. Let's see how we can track objects around in the image frame. So I've just opened up a new terminal and we are now ready to run our program. First of all, I'm just going to call the dir command so we can see what directory we are in. So first of all, we're just going to see the inter autolytics. Then I basically just copy pasted this command in. So we have our Python. So we're going to run this Python file. We go inside YOLO, V8, detect, and then we have this track.py that we just created ourselves. We set the model equal to YOLOV8 and the medium model. Uh, so we can actually like go in and modify that as well. So here we can choose the large model. Uh, so you can basically just, this is a trade off between like inference speed and accuracy. Uh, and then we basically just have the model twice here. We shouldn't have that. And then we have the source equal to zero because we're going to use the webcam. And then we set show equal to true. Then it will act like visualize the results as well when we run the program. So now we're ready to run the program. We just hit enter and it will run the command and then it will run this track.python file. So first of all, it will download the, the YOLO V8 model if you haven't run uh, the code before. Then it will open up your webcam. We can then see the results here and then it should be able to track persons over time. So here we see if I'm moving, uh, it acts like tracks me here with a certain color. I'm just going to take my webcam down here and then let's see if we can track some other, um, some other objects in the scene. So if I just turn around here, uh, we can actually see this chair. If I move it around, we can see how it moves around in the image frame. If we lose detections, it will actually like change the color. Uh, but now we can actually like see that we keep track of this chair uh, pretty nicely. And again, even though we're occluded by other objects, we still keep track of the object. If I'm moving it around, we can see that now it is in the top right corner um, of the image. So this is a really nice tracking algorithm. As you can see, we're still able to run in real time. We are running around like 10, 15 milliseconds. Uh, for the inference time and also running this object detector on or like tracker on top of it we're running at around like 75 frames per second so this is actually like a really uh, really awesome model here we can just see me as a person it detects me as a, at the center we can also have the mouse so if i'm moving the mouse around in the image basically i'm just moving the camera around but again we just keep track of all these points here so this is basically just the center of the of the tracked object or like the detected object and then we just throw that information into our tracker so this is just a really crazy tracker and object detector that we can combine and we can get some really nice results. So you should definitely use this in your own applications and projects uh, when you're going to create your object detectors in the future. This is really cool. You can see the results that we get. Um, I'm going to create other videos where we're going to create our own custom object detector, both for detection and also for instance segmentation. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And again, remember the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. Also like this video if you like the content and you want more in the future. It just will help me and YouTube channel out in a massive way. I'm currently also doing a computer vision tutorial and a deep learning tutorial where we talk about like uh, the basic things about computer vision, deep learning, how to get started with it, uh, learn the basics, the theories, how we can train neural networks from scratch, how does the high parameters um, affect the neural networks while training. So all these different kind of things is really useful when creating these computer vision and deep learning applications and projects. So if you're interested in one of those tutorials, I'll link to one of them up here or else I'll see you next week, guys. Bye for now.